Quick Tips is brought to you by Domain.com. What you do with your blocking will inform what your scene feels like, so today we're gonna take a look at some things to keep in mind. Quick Tips! Whenever you block a scene, you have to be thinking about what you want your audience to be feeling and thinking. Of course, blocking is just the planned movements of your actors and camera. As you block, you create marks. For the actors, these will go on the ground. For camera, you're gonna set marks for focus and in other places as well if you're doing a dolly move or the like. These marks are the reason why you're gonna hear people say things like back to one or let me see you on your two. Each number will represent the order in which each mark is to be hit. For instance, if my actor starts here, moves to this spot, then ends here, we have three marks. So if I want him to start over totally, I will say back to one, and so on. But that is just the technical side of blocking. What I want to point out is the motivation within your camera moves. Of course, you have the emotional motivation, like a push in to emphasize a character's point of view, but I'm talking more about what guides the camera to move from point A to point B, or not. For example, here's a shot from my short proximity. As the hunter approaches the prisoner on the ground, we could have just tilted down to him without anything leading us, but that would have made the camera move on its own and would have caused a slight break in the field that I wanted. So to make this move more fluid, I had the hunter throw down his cigarette to the ground when I wanted that tilt to the prisoner to happen. This way, we are following that object down, giving us our motivation for that movement. Another small example will be this right here. We start on one character, and now we want to pan to the other. We have some empty space here, and it feels a bit odd doing it this way, so we can have another character walk through the room, and at the right time, this leads us to our other actor. And here's one of my favorite examples from Indiana Jones. The shot glass goes down, but then another is picked up, and we follow it to the other character. So we're staying motivated the entire time, and it makes for a much more interesting shot. And although this seems like a small thing, for me, this is one of the biggest aspects that separates an amateur feel from a pro one. The opposite of the motivated shot, of course, would be one where the camera is moving without something guiding it, which this shot from my short film Tell would be a good example of that. I wanted this shot to be a voyeuristic sort of feel, not the perspective of either actor, but a third objective party slowly moving through to timidly discover what just happened here. So going with an unmotivated move made complete sense and helped to push the tone I wanted for this scene. Some of my favorite examples of moves like this would be from David Fincher. He has several shots in Panic Room that are doing something very similar. The camera is this extension of the audience moving with its own will. So there isn't one that's better than the other. Motivated and unmotivated can both be great. The point is to have a reason behind everything you do. You get a handle on that and you will be able to craft the emotion of your story that much more. But that's it, a basic look at unmotivated and motivated movements. As always, big thank you to the people who make this show possible, Domain.com, because no domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is reliable, affordable, and easy to use. Save 15% off your comms and nets at Domain.com with the coupon code QUICKTIPS. Because when you think domain names, think Domain.com. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>